This is Rene Descartes part three and I'm going to show you a diagram and I would love for you guys to make this on your own. Now I know this does not look exactly like what's in the book but if you want exactly what's in the book you go buy the book and you can draw it out exactly. But this is approximately what it looks like. Ta-da! Now I know you're standing there going, what in the world is that thing? And more importantly, uh, why did we even draw it? Okay. Well, eons ago there was a Greek geometer known as Pappus. Okay. And he had an interesting problem. And I'm going to go ahead and read this to you. And then I'll tell you how Rene Descartes tried to solve it. Actually, he did solve it. But we're just going to go through this step by step. Now, what does Rene Descartes actually say? Okay. According to Pappus, now, um, what Descartes was saying is that um, the problem he was presented was from Pappus, and the problem was having three, four, or more lines given in position. What does that mean? What it means is it's sort of like a Euclid proof, okay? You're given certain statements, and then you, from those statements, you have to prove something else. Well, in this case, you're given some lines, okay? You're given all these wonderful lines. Okay, let's go on here. It is first required to find a point from which as many other lines may be drawn. Okay, So, Descartes says what we're looking for is point C. Okay, We're given some lines and we have to find point C. And the reason why we have to find point C is because we can draw a whole bunch of other lines from point C after we find point C. Okay? We'll get into that uh, more intently in just a minute. Each making a given angle. Okay. Well, when you draw a line like this, and you draw a line like this, doesn't that make an angle? Of course it does. If you draw F to C and C to D, you got FCD as an angle. BCH is also an angle. BCF is also an angle, so on and so forth. So once you draw the lines, you start to form angles. Especially since these lines are not parallel to each other, which is very important. Okay. So that the rectangle of two of the lines, so what you're going to end up doing is doing what we did in Euclid, okay, we take two lines, double them, and then we make a rectangle out of them. Okay, and we did that in Euclid's book one and two. If you don't believe me, you can go back to Euclid's book one and book two, you can see this for yourself. So that the rectangle of two of the lines so drawn shall bear a given ratio to the square of the third. Now what that means is that if you take two of these lines and you make a rectangle out of them, then you'll have a number. Okay. Let's say for a rectangle you have one side that's five and another side that's three. Okay. So I don't know whether you take the 5 times the 3 or you would take 5 plus 3 and 5 plus 3. Of course, uh, that would make uh, 16. So I'm not really sure if they're talking about circumference or area. Not really. Well, not circumference. It would never be circumference. It would be area or um, I don't know. The point is 
that either you're going to do the 5 plus 3 plus 5 plus 3, or you're going to do the 5 times 3. Either way, it's going to have a ratio to the square of the third. So, you, so in other words, let's say we take CH and CB, and it's going to, and whatever that number is, is going to be a ratio to CF type thing. All right? But we'll get into that in greater details in some future videos. So don't jump to any conclusions just yet, okay? Because we're, we're going to talk about this in greater detail as, as the videos go on here. Now that's if there's only three lines. Or to the rectangle of the other two if there be four lines. Or again, that the parallel parallelopiped. Never heard of a parallelopiped, but we're going to talk about that in a later video. Upon the other three, if there be six. Or if there be seven, that the product obtained by multiplying four of them together shall bear a given ratio to the product of the other three. So on and so forth. Okay. Now, Pappas said that when there are only three or four lines given, this line is one of the three conic sections. But he does not undertake to determine, describe, or explain the nature of the line required. We're going to take that time. Okay. Now. Descartes says that if you're talking about only three, four, five lines, the required points can be found by elementary ge geometry. Okay. If you're talking about having six, seven, eight, or nine lines, then you have to use something called locus, which I talked about in a previous video. Okay. And that would involve using the conic sections, which we have not yet talked about in Euclid's Elements. Alright, and then he goes on and on and on. Now, we're going to go ahead with the actual diagram in itself. And we're going to talk about that in my next video. So I want you to stay tuned.